In partnership with Cleveland.com, this is Capital Letter. The rescheduled Ohio primary is on April 28th, and many are planning to vote absentee in order to maintain social distancing. But boards of elections are seeing some common mistakes from voters applying for a mail-in ballot. Cleveland.com reporter Andrew Tobias joins me now to talk more about some of these issues. Andrew, good to see you. It's good to see you. What must an application uh, for a mail-in ballot include? So it's some general personal information, like your name, your date of birth, and your address where you want to mail it. You have to make sure to request what kind of ballot you want. So that's either a partisan, like Republican, Democrat, or what have you, or a nonpartisan issue, issues only ballot. And then you have to provide some personal information to verify your identity, like either a driver's license number, the last four digits of your social security number, and then a signature. You basically have to make sure that all the information uh, is on the form, which uh, and then you send it in in order to get a ballot sent back. Sounds pretty basic. What are some of the mistakes that the county BOEs are seeing? So a lot of people that I've, uh, in, in talking to some of the county elections officials, are forgetting to sign it. Um, and that sounds kind of silly, but uh, there are some online prompts that elections officials have set up to help you fill it out online, and people are misunderstanding how that works. And then another really common issue is that people are forgetting to check which type of ballot they want. Um, and again, like I said, the important thing is they want to know whether you want uh, a ballot with Republican candidates, Democratic candidates, or just the issues. Has the Secretary of State, have they built in some sort of safeguards that help voters resolve some of the issues in time to have their ballots counted? So uh, the law as it's set up for this plan that's going on right now during the pandemic kind of understands that there are going to be people who are confused and maybe doing it for the first time. And so as long as it's an issue where maybe you input the information wrong, you switch two numbers around, or if you forgot to fill out a field, something like that, uh, elections officials are allowed to call or email you, and of course that means that they have to have your contact information, and they can get that information over the phone. Um, so that the idea is that they want to give more flexibility, because otherwise the alternative is that they just reject your application, they send you a new one, and ask you to fill it out again. And how, ac how accessible are those applications? So if you have an internet, and uh, if you have an internet connection, uh, if you're pretty tech savvy, you can get them online at voteohio.gov or your county board of elections website. A lot of them are offering it. Some alternatives, uh, some newspapers are printing them. You've the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the Columbus Dispatch, the Dayton Daily News, I know, have all printed them. And also uh, some grocery stores have them as kind of a partnership with the state. So it kind of varies case by case, but there's some different ways to get them. Uh, like I said, the, in the simplest way or the simplest answer is, is to get one online if that's an option for you. We know that envelopes for the actual ballots are pre-stamped. What about the applications? So you do have to get a stamp. There is an option that, that you would have that if you complete the application, you can drive it or otherwise deliver it to your county board of elections office. But this, the simplest answer is you have to make sure that you have a stamp and an envelope to mail it in. And generally speaking, a 55 cent standard stamp should do it. And just so our viewers know, Andrew, what's the deadline for returning a mail-in ballot? So they have to be postmarked on April 27th, which is just a little bit more than two weeks, or they have to be delivered in person on April 28th by 7.30 p.m. to the County Board of Elections where you live. Also, uh, in a somewhat related topic here, Andrew, the Ohio Supreme Court has surprisingly ruled against the Secretary of State in a case that seeks to get a measure that expands voter access on the ballot. Tell us about that. So uh, the ACLU, uh, namely, is backing that campaign, and they want to basically... Uh, put some things into the Ohio Constitution that would set a certain amount of time for early voting. It would automatically register people to vote if they visit the BMV and things like that. And so maybe about a month ago, which seems like a long time ago now, uh, with all that's gone on, uh, uh, Frank LaRose, who's the Secretary of State and some other officials, decided to split it into four pieces. And the Supreme Court ruled today that it actually should only be in one. And so that, that makes a difference because each one would show up as a different measure that Voters would have to consider, and they'd also have to collect a new batch of signatures, basically, for every single issue. So it's four times the work for the campaign trying to put it on the ballot. And they actually, by that, by the plaintiffs, the ACLU actually got some support from conservatives on the court. Uh, yeah, the Republican, it's a Republican-controlled court. Basically, it's a 6-1 ruling. There were two Democrats and four Republicans who ruled with them. So, of course, uh, viewers might be thinking about this. The question is, can they collect the signatures? Uh, and that obviously is a concern right now with the the virus that's out there, the health concerns that are uh, contained in that. But there is uh, an effort that the campaign and some of the other constitutional amendments that have been proposed uh, are out there. They're trying to sue to basically allow themselves to collect electronic signatures. And that issue kind of still has to remain to be seen how, that's, how that one's going to turn out. Andrew Tobias with Cleveland.com. Andrew, thank you. Thank you. And remember, you can see tomorrow's headlines today. Have click half capital letter delivered to your inbox by going to Cleveland.com slash capital letter.